Welcome to Rotary and Serving Our Community. My name is Wade Nomura and today we're going to take a look at one of our cooperating organizations, that group that we work with. It's Sister Cities International. And with me today I have Gil Garcia. Gil, welcome. Well, uh, thank you and uh, thank you for the invitation. I want to talk about two of my favorite uh, topics. <laughs> it Rotary, sounds Rotary and Sister Cities. Perfect. That sounds good. Yeah. Now tell us a little bit about yourself, Gil. <laughs> what, do you, what do you do? And uh... Well, I, I'm, uh, I'm an architect. Uh, I was uh, came came through it through a kind of a different way because I was born as, uh, in Santa Barbara, and uh, worked in, in worked in Goleta in a lot of the orchards and things like in picking the lemons and I was a great lemon picking lemon picker in those <laughs> days, and then I went to high school and went to school and uh, to see the world. I joined the service to after that to, after high school to see the world and they sent me to Oxnard Air Force Base for four years, and there I've got an opportunity to go to City College and there I had the seed to become an architect. I started drafting oh, and taking okay. math, and that's what kind of led me to be an architect. And I came back and started out as an office boy and uh, got my, my uh, license, and after I had enough training, I got my state license. So, so you're a native Santa Barbara then? Yes, native Santa Barbara. All right, that's, uh, good for yeah, you. <laughs> born and raised. So tell us a little bit about um, your rotary career. Well, my rotary career uh, was back in the 80s, started back in the 80s, and uh, I kind of fell into it similar to how I fell into architecture, I guess. <laughs> I, uh, I first joined Sister Cities, uh, Santa Barbara Puerto Vallarta Sister City Committee. Uh, uh, has over 40 years of, ex of uh, Sister City relationship. I knew nothing about Rotary, but when I started taking new visitations back in the 80s to our Sister City, you begin to make friends and you make contacts and you begin to talk to people and, 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 and some of them were Rotarians and they would invite me to see what they were doing, the projects they were working on, and I was impressed with how dedicated the uh, Rotarians were. So I, I told them, what, what, is, what is it all about Rotary? What is Rotary? So they explained to me, and I said, gee, I'd like to join Rotary. And they, they said, fine, go back and call a Rotary Club somewhere. Of course, I came back and didn't know any Rotarians. So I looked through the, uh, through the phone book and asked some people, and they got me a hold of an amateur a call, <laughs> and I joined Rotary. <laughs> That's interesting. Yeah. So you joined Rotary because of Sister Cities International, basically. True, true. Very That's good. True. Well, thank you um, for furnishing us. Uh, you got a PowerPoint here. Let's, let's go ahead and jump into the PowerPoint. Okay. Let me see what Sister Cities yeah. is all about. Yeah. First slide that we have up shows uh, the Rotary Club of Santa Barbara North. And if you want, you could walk us through the PowerPoint. Well, yeah. Uh, uh, this PowerPoint was uh, put together uh, for a visitation from our uh, sister Rotary Club in Puerto Vallarta. They were going to come here, and, and we were going to uh, talk to different Rotary Clubs here about the relationship between sister cities and Rotary. So we put together this PowerPoint, I put, my office put together this PowerPoint uh, with the help of the Rotarians and in, in the images they gave me, demonstrating the different uh, uh, cooperations, co uh, opportunities of cooperation that have happened over the years. Yeah. It goes back to the, since the 80s, we've been cooperating. So a lot of people are talking about alliances and cooperation that's happened more recently because of particularly economic times, uh, it's kind of uh, tough to do things all on your own now. So people look more and more alliances and cooperation. Yeah. And here we've been doing it since the 80s. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Yeah. True, true. Yeah. So your first slide so there the, shows uh, some palm trees. Uh, yeah, the, yes, the palm trees is typical of uh, you the know, tropical climate of Puerto Vallarta and the ocean view of the, from the land. And it's similar topography of Santa Barbara, the ocean and the mountains behind you and the, and the city in, in between. And then some of the hotels we stay at, just as a picture of the hotels we stay at. Beautiful swimming pools yeah, they have there. Beautiful, Natural, beautiful, beautiful swimming hotel pools. there. Yeah, you're yeah. really roughing it there yeah, in Mexico, really. aren't you? <laughs> well, somebody's somebody's got to do the work. So we, <laughs> yeah, so correct. We go there. And then the next slide is a Rotary um, on a trip. This is a Rotary North members on the trip to Puerto Vallarta. Uh, I put Rotary North members, although they are also combined with sister city members. Mm -hmm. Many of the Rot Rotary members of our club are sister city members and vice versa. Oh. So we two trips together. And this just shows that one of the, uh, the president uh, taking pictures of some of the projects and some of the activities that we, we, we are doing. And um, one of the, the uh, important things about this city is, is citizen diplomacy, social interaction, talking, building friendships. And it has really four pillars it's, uh, of a relationship, which is a, a, a respect. Everything starts with respect, friendship, brotherhood, and love. And I think when you get to the love portion, you love the culture, that's what motivates you a lot to do a lot of this work. It's like you create, it suddenly develops a passion, and that's yeah. what it is. Kind that's of parallel you, to yeah, Rotary then, exactly. no wonder it makes sense. You get, yeah. you get to that passion. Very good. 
And the next slide shows the kind of the first projects and what motivated me to join Rotary in the first place because when I went to Puerto Vallarta as, as a city member and I saw that they were a doctor, Rotarian, was taking these children uh, that were dragging themselves around in these villages and a lot of polio problems at that time. And, and um, uh, they, they would, I, I would notice that they would call them, you know, uh, niños de basura or hmm. because they, they really, children of, children of trash, because they really weren't functional as yeah. they would just drag themselves and they kind of fed them. But this, this Rotarian would pick them up and he was an orthopedic surgeon and he would uh, operate on them. Wow. And then they would take them to Guadalajara to they operate and then they'd have to stay there uh, because of the th uh, therapy that has to go on after an operation. It takes months of therapy. Mm. So that then caused a, a hardship for the people, in, uh, the families in Puerto Vallarta to have to go to uh, Guadalajara, some, some, some sleeping out on the streets while their children are being um, rehabbed. Mm. So the goal then of Rotary at that time, then my goal when I, t when I talked to Rotarians is we need, we need a rehab hospital here. So this shows a picture of the rehab hospital we built back in 1989, 90. Uh, it was designed by students in uh, Cal Poly. As an architect, I went to them and made it a project. The winning architects uh, were three architects uh, uh, out of several that were designed. And, was, and out of those three, I'm, I'm sorry, it was three designs. Uh, and three designs went there and one was selected. And then the two young men that were the winners spent a year and got their f credentials, the fifth year, under the tutelage of an architect of Puerto Vallarta to, to do the drawings, to do the working drawings. And at that time also they did a, a ADA for the entire city of Puerto Vallarta. That, by the way, is a, a, couple, a couple years ago started to be implemented <laughs> after all these years. So that's, that was a, a, a very good project that's now complete and we uh, funded it and built it, and it's all now a private project under a private uh, nonprofit organization. Well, that's a good, a good yeah. partnership because uh, one thing fascinating is that Rotary won't build the buildings, but they'll put right. everything inside. That's right, exactly. And matter of fact, Rotary uh, uh, gave us eighty thousand dollars to equip this wow. building, and it was o and the equipment was ordered by the Shriners Hospital. Hmm. So the and I and I designed a, a fountain for the Shriners Hospital, which they paid me with the. Paid me with the equipment. <laughs> oh, perfect. So, uh, well, so thank, it was, it was take, there, take, take, take off on the dolphin fountain, which I designed the base for the dolphin fountain here. Okay. So, so that's why I was, and they were able to design the dolphin nice. fountain and the base in Shiner's Hospital. Uh, but they, um, so it was a collaborative effect, uh, project, which is now running very well. And then the next photo sh uh, shows a, on a current visit mm -hmm. where we now maintain it. You see it. Operating, you see a lot of the equipment yeah, inside. Beautiful. The new building, we just uh, we just added a new building to it, and we uh, put a new roof uh, on some of the building where you had some heavy, heavy rains and started to leak. So uh, then we went to the more recently we uh, created a partnership with Rotary to do a clinic in the community of Boca de Tomatlan, which is a community just on the just on the. Uh, border between the next municipality, which is Cabo Corrientes and Puerto Vallarta. There's a river that comes down, they call it Boca de Tomatlan, which means mouth of the river. Mm -hmm. And this is on one side of the river, the other side is the other municipality. And uh, to get there was about 30 minutes. People were actually, fatalities were happening because he couldn't get them to the, to, uh, the downtown in time. Wow. And a lot of them had to do with the up against the cliff and you'd have rocks come down, you'd have the, uh, blockage. So they needed a clinic in, in there, and there we ended up developing a um, another partnership, which is with the migrant clubs. Uh, we found out that there is a um, three-to-one program with uh, Government of Mexico that they provide probably about 50 to 70 million a year uh, for funding directed toward migrants living in the United States. They can do projects with that money, but it's three to one. So you take that 70 million and you multiply it by <laughs> three more parts. You yeah. see how much projects is available then by monies coming from additional monies, one part money coming from migrants over there. But we qualified because we have been a sister city and um, longer than some migrants are old, as old. Yeah. <laughs> so they said, well, you know, you're, you're helping Puerto Vallarta. So the consulate said, yeah, you can qualify. So we qualified and we are now uh, considered like a migrant club. So this was done with a three-to-one funding, this project. And uh, it's just recently completed. 
a lot of the photographs you see here is visitations before it got started, uh, the one, the group on location, mm -hmm. a site of, of the Bo Tomatlan Clinic, that we call the miracle of Tomatlan because when I started to explain to them the cost of this project, how much money more, I, I needed about 17,000 more to raise for our one part. Before I said how I was gonna raise it, somebody raised their hand and said, I'll raise, I'll pay 5,000, so I said, I'll pay 5,000. So in that moment, we raised 25, <laughs> better a minute we raised $25,000. Wow. So it, it completed our, fund, our one part funding. The other photographs show the community meetings we had because part of Rotary in order for, uh, and we take this, Sister City now takes this from Rotary that we have to uh, really know the needs of the community and it's gotta be their project. We don't come down and say, here, we're gonna give you yeah, this. Yeah. We, they, we do a needs assessment Correct. and they tell us what their highest need is. Right. In this case, it was health. Health uh, for Boca de Madlan, which is a regional clinic that serves communities all around, of which three of them you can only get by boat. And there was a lot of fatalities just to be able to get people from those uh, communities to the Boca Clinic. So here Rotary came in again under a grant and we, get, and we gave them first response equipment to stabilize the, cl the patient and then put them on a boat. Now I realize how difficult it is to <laughs> carry somebody on a carry them on a boat because I carry the equipment on the boat over there. <laughs> so, <laughs> true. so I realize how difficult it must yeah. be for them to carry a human being. Yeah, must be. Put them on a little boat. Because <laughs> everything's moving. <laughs> yeah, everything's moving. <laughs> so this, this uh, shows a lot of the, the, a lot of the community uh, meetings and, uh, and my explaining this a lot to Rotary because I had a lot of presentations to Rotary. Uh, under the uh, other projects, we have uh, uh, feed the children project. Uh, this happened uh, because we noticed that a lot of the children in the area, they called them Mahistadio area, where the landfill used to be, and the families would make their life by recycling, hmm. rummaging through the landfill. And a lot of the children then uh, weren't, weren't uh, getting, uh, weren't doing good in school. So we, we then got them which is another program, we got them scholarships to be able to go to school, but then we found out they weren't learning very well and we found out because they were hungry. So then this, this started the, the Feed the Children and after that, their grades started to go up hmm. and more, and more uh, scholarships were then able to, to work. We've donated wheelchairs uh, uh, to Puerto Vallarta and uh, we've done this in cooperation with other Rotary Clubs because Puerto Vallarta is a, is a point where you go sometimes during the high season, you go to a Rotary meeting there, you probably see more Canadians and Americans there, <laughs> Mexican Rotarians, yeah. because many of them have summer homes there, or what they call, yes, uh, winter homes there, I should say. They're summer down there, winter homes. And uh, they get very involved in the community and they also see the needs. So in cooperation with them, we work and we send wheelchairs for the people that need wheelchairs. Good. The other, the other thing that we do is, as somebody, uh, you know, as you know, water is the basic need of all communities. Uh, there's many illnesses due to, due to uh, bad water in, in the remote villages. So we found that um, when, when illnesses occur and the mother can't go to work, they have to stay home. The children, some, and the children can't go to school, they have to stay home. With bad water, the babies don't have color even when they go, they, they, they look like they're always kind of sick. They are, they are sick actually. Yeah. And uh, so we, we uh, do a temporary solution because it's a big infrastructure to put water. We, uh, this works for 10 years. It's getting a bucket and with a filter in it. And we got literally thousands of those buckets hmm. and we're handing them out, going out. Here you see where we handed out the buckets. They, they, put, they fill it and it filters through and then that becomes potable water. In other communities, we ended up for, I think it was about $5,000 we did with the Rotary Grants, and, and uh, we, ha we have a central filter in a school in the middle of the community, and sometimes they would come and nearby communities would, would use that, and, they, and from that filter, we, we would create a piping system to the closer, closest people. So water is, was something that's very important, and the, they take a lot of the water from contaminated uh, river water. Uh, so that's one of the big projects right now that we is ongoing. Other projects include libraries that we do. Mm -hmm. uh, 
computer, computer classes, and uh, the children in the, in, the, in the scholarship program. We see pictures of the children in the scholarship program. Uh, we, we provide instruments also for uh, music uh, tr and teach music. And uh, the bottom picture, I think one of the, one of the slideshows you see here, UNIVA is a, is a university there in Puerto Vallarta, uh, which they uh, put together a symphony and they teach music to every, everyone that wants to learn music. So that's an important cultural thing in Mexico. So that's, that's pretty much uh, a little bit of everything that we do. Uh, the project that we're now working on that we just submitted uh, is uh, a sewing business for uh, 100 mothers that in a uh, community of poverty that the mothers can't afford to uh, keep their children in school or the families can't afford to keep their children in school, the fathers don't make enough. So the children have to quit school to help the, the family. So this provides income for the mothers. And um, it's, a, it's a three to one project we're working on. Uh, and it will be ready probably next year. But in order to prepare them for a business, we have to teach them how to run a business. And that's where this university comes in. The young people there have an excellent uh, work tr uh, business training program. And so, and they also have an excellent program on how to market your goods. Before, before we do the business side, we had to train them also how to sew. Many of them didn't know how to sew. Some of them did, but not professionally. So we've already completed a school, a sewing school, and we already graduated about maybe 50 mothers from the sewing school. So they're waiting now to go over to this cooperative business that they will then be use their skills. As far as the product, well, every child in Mexico is required, in Puerto Vallarta is required to wear uniforms, so they'll, they'll do the uniforms. And the government pays for a lot of the uniforms, so they'll buy them now from this cooperative. In addition to that, some stores, and there's many stores that service tourist, tourism there, already ordering from, this, uh, from the school. They can't produce right now as much as the orders are coming in even. So you can see how the business is going to be good. an excellent yeah. business once it gets going yeah. and moving. Outstanding. So, so that's that's our the project we're working on. One now, other now is this project, by the way, um, in a factory? Do they work out of the school or yeah, is the, it the, uh, the school is a is a building that used to be um, a home for the elderly, uh, and it grew. It was too small, so they built one a larger one next door. And so they, the government then gave this to Rotary on what they call a comodato, which is a lease, mm -hmm. uh, and 30-year lease. So we then uh, collaborated with Rotary and sister cities, and we remodeled it to make it a school. Right next door is, is a piece of property, that, which that's where the factory is going to go. And we have already have the plans for that. Uh, matter of fact, I just received them a couple of days ago, and uh, we're putting it into the system. Uh, to, to, by the system, I mean everything has to be now through the Mexican government has to be done to, by computers. Everything's lifted into the computer system, and then they it, uh, they uh, review it all the projects that are coming in. It's interesting that before we did it by paperwork, a lot of projects were in by now, but computer is a little more difficult. So we we checked with Guadalajara the for how many projects have come in. Actually, only I think five projects, and so because it's more difficult for them right now. So there are courses being given to how to enter it into the computer system. Mm -hmm. That's just a big job in itself. So we already got that course. We know how to do it. So we're entering it into the computer system. Yeah. Sounds good. I have a few more pictures there left. Uh, next set of pictures actually was from an event that um, we hosted. Actually, you worked with me on that. Was yes, I did. And uh, thank you for... Uh, Paso Robles. Uh, yeah, at uh, Paso Robles and uh, San Miguel, Mission San Miguel. Uh, we, uh, Sister Cities International, it, it located in Washington, D.C., has about 2,000 relationships throughout the world and uh, 160 countries. And uh, we have a, it, it's a bottoms up organization, just like Rotary, but I, I will say that Rotary is much better organized in training the, the bottom of the pyramid <laughs> to, <laughs> to work up to the top and to get things done. But so the, the bottom is well trained in Rotary 
and that's where we're learning, that's where I'm learning a lot from Rotary, to be able to train our organizations, city organizations, uh, so they can be effective because the strength of any organization is really the strength of the local projects sure. and the local, how well the local people can understand and do the work. Mm -hmm. uh, that's why Rotary is so successful. And, but we then have the network then needs that kind of training and it's all volunteers doing the training. So we have state associations, which I'm president of, the, of Southern California, and there's a Northern California. And our mission is to have, we have about four uh, meetings a year, of which they end up being workshops, uh, best practices, training sessions, on, and it's a feedback too as to what's been successful, and so that, that helps the others. So this meeting in San Miguel was the two state organizations coming together after not having done so in 20 years. Hmm. So this wow. was this was a memorable day, wow. 20 years, and it was very well, I think, uh, attended by leadership. This is all the leadership of the Northern of California, and the Washington DC was here as well, incoming to the president, uh, chairman of the board, I say, of Sister Cities International, and the incoming chairman of the board was there, and the president, Mary Kane, was there. And they all uh, were very pleased with the turnout, and it was kind of, uh, as you recall, a kickoff too to the 60th anniversary of Sister Cities International that will be celebrated in Washington, D.C. in July. That'll be a big event as well. So, that would be, yeah, yeah. very good. Um, and we appreciated your coming to talk and giving us a talk about how Rotary and Sister City, how Rotary can do what we've been doing. <laughs> so, sounds like a great, great opportunity. Yeah. You know, the partnership of the two organizations yeah. is going to definitely help yeah. a lot in those areas yeah. specific. So tell me a little bit about yourself as far as the projects. What project have you done that really stands out in your mind? You're talking about... Uh, Either one. Rotary uh, Project, Sister Cities Project, one that... Oh, the Sister... Well, the, I've done, we've done so many uh, projects, but I, I'm very, very uh, proud of the, of the rehab clinic because um, that was done with a lot of collaboration. We had the school... We had the Shriners Hospital, we had the Rotarians, we had Sister Cities, and then we had grants from, uh, uh, from Japan for, uh, for these students to spend their time in Mexico. So we had Japanese uh, student grant. Wow. So it, was interna it became an international project. So, and that's what really Sister Cities is all about, is getting all the getting everybody to work together to do something, it creates that closeness and the passion to do something. Working together creates friendships. Uh, because anybody, an uh, architect could have done it in Puerto Vallarta and it would have been done. But that wasn't the theme. The theme was <laughs> how do you get people involved to do it yeah. and it's theirs. So I'm very proud of that. The other, the other one, of course, is we've, uh, current projects, it, the Boca de Tomatlan project, I think is something too that's kind of a new one for us in that we're first time we're doing the three to one. So we're proud of the support we got from that, from our membership. It cost about $200,000 to build that. We had to come up with one, one part of that. Uh, and this uh, project that we're gonna be working on also is gonna be something that really makes an impact. I think we look at the projects that not so much is a hand out, but a hand up so they can really sustain themselves. And that's what I like about Rotary, and we preach that in Sister Cities, sustainability. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> sustainability is so important. Yeah, it really is. Because otherwise big, you can never big difference. You can never fill the hole if you just keep putting money into it. <laughs> Very true. It'll never work. Now, how do you identify these projects? Um, is it through a Sister Cities um, cooperation, or is it just something that somebody comes to you and say, you know what, we have a need? Well, we Rotary is very well... Uh, versed on all the needs in Puerto Vallarta because they, they do a lot of the work and have been doing a lot of the work. And when I got there, I saw one Rotarian saw the need and he was working on it. And from there, we, we, saw, we, saw, the, we saw the need. Yet, but the other thing that we do is we've also built schools there. We, another little project I forgot to mention, we built a school where workers come in from all over Mexico when there's a big building boom and there's not enough housing for them. So they start to you know, make settlements outside the city and pretty soon you have kids, uh, children, and there's a teacher, you get a teacher out there and they're, and they're learning under a tree. 
So we built uh, we built a, a, a school for them. So we I mean ob we saw the obvious need there. We built a, a school there. So uh, and Rotary helped on that as well. But we're trying to push more toward uh, getting sustainable plans from neighborhoods, from communities. We like to go to community and say, okay, we want to help you do this, but tell us, how do you intend to make your community a community that's going to be sustainable? How, do you, how are you going to raise the economic base of your community? What is it that you need? What is your plan? And uh, you know, we, I wrote a paper on it, as a matter of fact, it's uh, philanthropy from Sister Cities and Rotary, uh, and taking the theme of Rotary, which is identify the need, understand the need, uh, but it's their need and it's their plan. Otherwise, what you're going to what you're going to provide a solution may not work for them at all. Yeah. yeah, and it could be a very simple solution to start with, but sometimes we go in there with this grand solution when it's really a simple little one step, and they're very happy with that. And then you take the next step, and then sure. you take the next step, and pretty soon you arrive to this grand solution. But they arrived it. They arrived there, and that's what we're trying to do now. That is good. Uh, through and this, the last government appreciated that with us when we did that in Boca de Tomatlan. Uh, we have a new mayor now, and he's very cooperative, and I see that uh, he's now working with us to do a similar thing. And we try to empower each community yeah. to have a community group that really understands, and they become, we try to even make them a 501c3. Over there, over there they call it Asociación Civil. Mm -hmm. Asociación Civil. And they, uh, and we go talk to the different, different communities and ask them. So to basically identify, empowering the community to, empowering the community. Lead, to lead themselves yeah. to improve. Yeah. It's a good model. That's, that's, and that's the way it has to be. Yeah. Yeah, it has to be, otherwise you'll never, never solve it. But you, you'll never solve all the problems, but when people are working to solve their own problems, they feel a lot better. And they, they have, they're motivated. A lot of sweat equity goes into the solving the problem yeah. instead of just waiting there. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, have you kept track of any of those projects that you've done? Well, the, the, the people, the, do you go the, back and visit those? Oh, yeah, but we, we developed deep friendships. <laughs> Part of what Cesar City is all about. I developed uh, some deep friendships of uh, people, and we go back and visit with them. But uh, it, it is something that's an ongoing uh, thing for us is to try to identify that need and try to, uh, through, through, the, through the communities, and try to empower them. What we do now as a greater, as a sister city, organization when I was I was on Sister Cities International Board of Directors. Yeah, we're going to have to wrap yeah. up here. We're kind of okay. running out of time. Yeah. So okay. uh, again, thank you very much yeah. for coming. Well, I know we pleasure. can talk about this all day. It's all the yeah. things that we do good <laughs> in the world. With that, everybody, thank you very much for joining us. Take a look at Sister Cities. Take a look at Rotary. See what they have to offer in changing the world. Thank yeah. you very much for your time. <laughs> <laughs>